Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to look at how you can implement pagination into your Material UI table. As I mentioned in my last Material UI table video, which if you haven't seen before and you're not familiar with tables, you should definitely check out, the table is probably the most complex component that Material UI has, just for the sheer fact that there's so many things you can do with it. You can have headers, you can have sort of filters and sorting, you can um, also have checklists and stuff like that, you can have pagination, there's just a lot you can do with it and a lot of it is really custom code to implement it. I was going to go over sorting as well in this video, but I realized most of the sorting code, if you're trying to learn how to sort um, with your table, you should pretty much just copy the way Material UI does it. It's not really anything extraordinary, and a lot of it's just sort of math and pure JavaScript operations that they implement into their uh, tables itself. Now, when it comes to pagination, however, there are a couple of different ways you can do it. And if you were to look at, for example, this big table I have over here and look at the code, we'll see here, this is probably one of the most streamlined examples they have of pagination. And the code sort of goes on and on and on and on and on with a lot of different things. And it's not very uh, easy. In fact, around a year ago, I was trying to implement one of these big tables with pagination and sorting into my project. And I had no idea what it was doing. And I pretty much just copied and paste of the code and looking at it from a year later and I'm still sort of uh, intimidated by how difficult it is. Um, and by the way, if you find value in this video, please consider subscribing, leaving a comment, or liking the video. I try to reply to every single comment. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. If, uh, you know, I, I would feel sort of weird if I was leaving a comment and I knew the creator was going to respond, but I don't know, it seems to be working. Um, so yeah, I love interacting with you guys and I love the positive feedback that I've got from these videos. As always, if you have any suggestions, please leave them below. So let's sort of jump straight in. If you remember the original video that I did, the simple uh, table code is actually pretty straightforward. We have pretty much the data we want to put in, just going at a very high level overview. And then essentially we have a head Header, a table head component where we can define all the table headers and then we have sort of a loop that goes through all the rows and creates a row with all the cells for every single part of the table and in our example we were using a list of desserts each dessert would have a name calories fat carbs and protein now one of the helpful things is to look at the pagination component uh, that material UI uh, sort of supplies on its own. You can see here that pagination is actually a separate component and you can use pagination in for more things than just uh, tables. For example, here's some pagination, for example, if you're displaying things on the screen unrelated to a table, um, you can see it has something as simple as uh, count. You can also add props like disabled. You can add different styles to your pagination. Um, you can also, for example, have different buttons in your pagination. So for example, buttons that will go to the next page, buttons that will take you to the last page, um, depending on where you are, and all different ranges of pagination. However, if you scroll to the very bottom, we'll see here that they have um, a specific table pagination. Uh, that is used specifically for tables. And this is a separate component. As you can see here, it's ex imported as table pagination. And I specifically want to look at tables pagination, this table pagination component, outside of the table, just so you get a gist of how it works without the um, table and without all this code uh, sort of being here to sort of clutter things up, um, just so you can see the sort of core of what it's like. You can see here, that this is the actual table pagination component. And in the main example, you pretty much just put this under your, either under or inside of your table container, depending on how you would look, but it comes after all the rows, essentially. You see here, we pass the standard component prop, um, which is set to div. You can pretty much just leave that. Um, you can have components set to paper, and it just determines uh, the wrapper that this component will be in, whether the wrapper is a div, a regular div, or whether it's a paper component, et cetera, et cetera. Count here is the actual count of uh, all your rows. So for, you, for you, you can see, for example, here, we have set that to 100. And if I were to scroll up, you can see we're on page, uh, we're looking at items 21 to 30 out of 100. So that's where this gets used. Then you can see here, we have the current page that we're on, what we want to happen when we change the page, how many rows we want for page, and the on change rows per page. So 
we're going to see here uh, if we look up how all of these interact. So first things first, we create a React state, and that state will just tell us what page we're on. We can see here they use the default as page two, um, but in reality, most of the times, you're probably going to want to start your table on the first page. It's sort of weird having your table load and automatically be on a random page other than the first page. Um, and then we have the rows per page. So this is also a state variable, and this can change a lot. And it's also worth noting for this prop rows per page, you can. Uh, um, there's also a variable that goes uh, good with it, and it's called row, rows per page options. Um, and you can pass in an array of options that you want in your page. So for, for example, if you want the user to be able to select between 5, 10, and 25, if we scroll up here, you can see that's sort of uh, what they've gone ahead and done here. So now if we come back, we can see we have the handle change page. And all that will do is we pass, we pretty much just use our state variable and set the page to new page. These parameters are automatically passed in as part of the component, so you don't have to worry about um, any of these being passed in. And then this one here, which is handle change rows per page. So when you change the rows uh, per page, you will be setting your rows per page and also setting your page to zero so that it resets and it shows the first page with the updated rows. And that is basically uh, basically. Um, how the table pagination works. Now, I'm going to go to my code sandbox, which by the way, you'll be able to um, get the link to in the description of this video. So you can play around with it, fork it, play around with it, uh, make it your own type of thing. And you'll see here that what I have is just the very basic table example with pagination added onto it. Um, and I'm going to show you exactly what I added. And you'll see most of it is essentially just what we saw here. But there's also going to be some things we have to add to make it work properly with the table itself. So first of all, let's go over the original changes. We can see here that I've set the page to zero. I have a page variable, a uh, state variable I've set it to zero. We have our roles for page, just like in our pagination example. Then these two functions right here, handle page change and handle change uh, row per page, the exact same as we saw um, in this pagination. And you'll see here, if I scroll down to the bottom, I have put my table pagination thing right before the end of the table container. And that will make it so that it shows up at the very last row. Now let's look at sort of everything I had to do in order to make it work properly. Well, as you can see here, I added a row per page options array. I set to 5, 10, and 25. And just a side note, if you look at the mock data, I pretty much have the same mock data as they had in the examples, but I got lazy and I wanted there to be more rows, so I added a bunch of different gingerbread uh, rows in there. Which is why if I scroll through the table, you'll see things like gingerbread, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. I just didn't want to think of uh, dessert names to add that in. But um, So that's one thing I added in. Uh, now let's keep going back to uh, the um, differences. So one thing you'll notice, if I go back to the original code, you'll see when we want to go in their really complex example that has sorting and stuff like that, when they want to uh, go ahead and map through all the rows to display all of them, they pretty much take this function, stable sort rows get comparator, and then they do a dot slice and a dot map on it. Normally, without any pagination, without any sorting, you'll see that it's actually pretty simple. All you're doing is you're mapping through a list of all the rows. Now, the only difference is here, the, what we're doing, number one, is they are sorting the rows. And then they are splitting the rows up depending on what page we are on. So because we are on, we're not doing any sorting and we're only doing pagination, we're only going to look at this dot slice. Essentially, we are going to be calling row dot slice and then we are going to map through that. Now you can see here, if you're not familiar with slice, what is that? What that is going to do is when you, you when you use slice on an array, the first parameter you specify is the starting index of the array, and the second parameter you specify is the ending uh, index of the array. And what it'll do is it will make a new array that has only those elements. And I can sort of um, let me open up Paint and sort of. Uh, show you a bit easier. So for example, and let me zoom in so you guys can see it, and I'll make uh, this brush size a bit bigger. If let's say I have an array, and my array has like letters A, B, C, D in it. And this is index 0, this is index 1, 2, and 3. If I were to do my array dot slice, and let's say for example I put in like 1 to 3, 
it will take all the elements from one from index one to index three and put it in a new array. Well, index one is here and index three is here. So it would take B, C, D and pop that in a new array. And that's really important to understand because if we look at how this is actually working, the table rows that we are showing are dependent on this array that we are mapping through. So if we only wanted to show, for example, um, <clears throat> if we only wanted to show, for example, the first five rows out of, you know, 17 rows in total, well, we can slice our array and say we want from index 0 to 4, and it will only show the elements in those index. And you can see here the way it's doing that is just taking our page, the page that we're currently on, times the rows per page. So the page we're currently on is 0, times the rows per page, which is 5. So it's going to start at index 0 times 5, which is just 0. And then it's going to end at page, uh, at at the index page times row, uh, rows per page, which is the same thing, zero times five, plus our rows per page. So it's so that's going to be zero plus five, which is going to be five. So we are going to go from index zero to five. The rows we are going to uh, be showing are in the array indexes zero to five. Now, when we switch it to page two, all of a sudden page becomes one. So we are going to show uh, everything from index. Uh, 1 times 5, which is 5, to 1 times 5 plus 5, which is 10. And that is how this slice operation work is working. It looks really complicated when you see the example in code, but if you sort of just break it down, it becomes really simple. And all we're doing is we are just making a new array um, from our original, you know, desserts array from indexes 5 to 10, and we are displaying all of those. Now, that is really important to understand. And once you understand that, there's really not much to this. There's only one other thing that you uh, use to make pagination look nice. And that is, for example, if we get to the end of our table, you can see here that it shows the last two, um, uh, the last two indexes, the last two items in our table, because obviously we're sorting by fives and there's only 17 items. So we're showing items 16 to 17, 16 to 17, but there's not enough to fill up the whole table. So what they do at the very end over here, right after they finish displaying the rows, is they create blank rows or yeah, blank table rows for every single row that they are missing out of the thing. So we are missing three rows here because we only have 17. We're missing row 18, 19, and 20 to display on our, you know, five rows per page. So what they do here is they create three empty rows so it takes up the space. So the table doesn't like, you know, randomly shrink when you go here. If I were to, for example, comment this out, you'll see when I get to the last page, the table will automatically shrink, shrink to that size. And you can see if I'm just like, you know, trying to go through all the rows, it's sort of... Uh, not a good um, user experience. Sorry, that was my RuneScape uh, <laughs> RuneScape notification. It's not a good uh, user experience um, to have the table just sort of shrink. So all they do here is they pretty much um, make a separate table cell, uh, a t one table row that takes up the space of the amount of empty rows times the amount of height each row takes up. So each row takes up three and we have we should have three empty rows so 53 uh sorry pixels and we have th uh three empty rows so it takes up height 53 times three and this empty rows is just calculated uh with this very simple mathematical formula it's just the rows per page minus the minimum these are the rows per page if for example you have an empty row or the rows that length minus how much page uh how much pages you have in total and that is pretty much how pagination works um like I said, it looks really complex on the surface, but once you sort of break it down into these individual parts, it becomes very usable and very easy. Um, and if you're interested in doing sorting and selecting, I highly recommend sort of just copying what they have on the on the um, documentation because it sort of looks uh, very complex as well. But once you break it down into parts, it's sort of the same way. And there's not really any way you can uh, do it to sort of deviate from the way they've already done it. But yeah, um, if you found value in this video, I hope you uh, consider subscribing, leaving a comment. Like I said, it really helps with the channel. It helps with the YouTube algorithm to get these videos out there. And I'm really grateful for all of you watching and finding value in these videos. Uh, it really means a lot to me um, that it's helping a lot of people. And I hope I can just continue doing this every single week. Uh, so thanks a lot for watching. Hope everyone's staying safe. And I'll see you guys next week.